Sure, is that better? That is better, thank you. Um, Ms. Beattie, are you a licensed social worker? I am. And how long have you been a licensed social worker? Um, for 22 years. And do you know what, under what chapter you're licensed? 491. Are you a medical provider? No. Are you a medical doctor? No. Are you a nurse? No. Do you provide medical care? No. Okay, all right. Um, Ms. Beattie, the jury's heard about you. Uh, I heard your name, and there's been some discussion about you in court. Uh, are you, in fact, uh, the social worker that was assigned to Maya Kowalski while she was in the All Children's Hospital from October to January, October 16 to January 17? Yes, I was. Okay. Were there other social workers that were also involved? Yes. But were you considered the primary social worker? Yes. By the way, Ms. Beattie, did you and I meet last night? We did. For how long? For about an hour and a half. Um, let's get a little background. Uh, where did you grow up? I grew up in Clearwater. I was born and raised in Clearwater. Where did you go to school? Uh, I started out um, in college at FSU and then returned um, to Tampa and went to USF and did my master's at USF. And why did you leave FSU? I was on a swim scholarship and I hurt my shoulder. Did you say swimming? Swim scholarship. Okay. Right. And what was your uh, bachelor's in from USF? In psychology. Okay. Can, can you take us forward with your employment from the time you got until you get your master's? So start with your biology, biology, your psychology. bachelor's in psychology, sure. and take us forward. I came out of college and went to work for Frito Lay in their management training program. Um, I worked for them for about three years and was recruited by Procter & Gamble to work in their beverage division. And from their beverage division, I went to um, work for VIX, which P&G bought VIX. And I worked for VIX um, in account settings, so I would call on grocery stores and grocery chains in order to set up their ads and their product for cough and cold and, and suntan. And I did that for almost 11 years. Did that involve a lot of traveling? It did. I was on the go. I was in an airplane at least three or four days a week. Why did you, did you go back to school? I did. My parents, my mom passed away in 1993 and my dad in 94. And I had young children at home. Um, it gave me an opportunity to go back to college. So I think it was in 97, I went back and um, I had to take some prerequisites to do a master's in social work. So I took some of the prerequisites and then started my uh, master's in social work in 98. And when did you graduate with your master's? In 2000. Okay. So you mentioned, you mentioned children. Do you have a family? I do. Can you tell us just generally? Sure. Um, I have a daughter. She's 37 and she's in Tampa. And then I have two stepsons. and. I also have my sister. Um, I had two brothers. That There were three brothers, but um, two of them have since passed away. So I have an older brother and my younger sister and I. We're all very close, and it's a very large extended family. I have a nephew um, who has two children, and he's the stepfather to another child who she has a little baby. So we have a big extended family. Do you have grandchildren? I do. I have two. Um, let me ask you, um, so we're going to go through, we're going to finish your uh, work history in a minute, but, um, and I'm going to take you through some of the things that have occurred during the time that Mike Kowalski was in the hospital. It's three months, we're not going to talk about everything, okay. so I'll try to direct you to when and what I'm talking about, just let sure. you know if you're confused or if I've confused you with my question. Okay. Sure. Um, but you talked about your family, your grandkids, um, your extended family. Did you at any time ever tell Maya Kowalski that you wanted to be her mother? No, absolutely not. Um, let's talk about your social work, work history. Mm -hmm. um, so after you got your master's, where did you go to work? I went to work at Suncoast Center and um, I had been working there during uh, graduate school and also did an internship at Suncoast Center during graduate school. So when I finished, 
um, in graduate school, I did a, we had to write a grant, and I wrote a grant to Family Continuity, which was one of the child uh, DCF uh, community-based care organizations. And I wrote a grant to teen services. It was working with teens that were aging out of foster care to help give them the skills that they needed in order to leave foster care at the age of 18. Um, I so wrote, what happened when you, when you wrote, did you get the grant? Yeah, I wrote the grant for one person and we ended up getting the whole program. So it was four therapists, two case managers, and myself as a manager. Okay. And what was the point of that program? It, it was to help kids that are getting ready to turn 18 to get the services that they would need in order to leave foster care because at 18 you leave foster care. What was your next role with respect to Sunco Center? So I also wrote another grant um, for Diversion Services in Pasco County, and that role was to keep kids out of foster care, and I had two therapists who were working for me there. Um, through that time, I, there was a shortage of people to work with therapeutic foster care kids, which are kids that have severe um, behavioral problems. So I took on a couple of those cases, and um, I worked with those kids and then became manager of that program. And so I managed the therapeutic foster care program, which probably had about 40 beds, along with teen services and diversion services. So how long in total were you with Suncoast? 11 years. What was your next place of employment? So there was a position through Healthy Start, which works with moms that are drug abusing. Um, and I worked with them through OBGYN, which was a group of five obstetricians and gynecologists and three nurse midwives. And what was your role there? So for every new pregnancy that came into the office, I did a small evaluation to see if there were resources that were needed. And for some people, they didn't need anything, and for some people, they needed quite a few things. And how long did that position last? So when I started there, it was a private practice. All children's bought that private practice out, and I worked in the OBGYN for another two years, and then I went to work in the hospital in the pediatric intensive care unit um, two years later. So all together from OBGYN through when John Hopkins then bought out all children's, I think it was almost 12 years. Okay. So when you started, when did you start in the all children's pick unit? Oh. That would have been... Does it sound 2009? Sound yeah, right? something like that. And can you, are they, they, the jury's heard PICU, but just go ahead and, and remind them, what does PICU stand for? Sure, it's the Pediatric Intensive Care Unit. So what was your role as a social worker in the PICU? So for every new child that was admitted, I did a, um, an evaluation to see how the family was doing, how the child was doing. Um, what resources were needed. Um, many times our families came from far away and they might need lodging, they might need food, they might need gas to get home. So I would provide those resources. I would also work with case management on discharge plans. Between, well, when you're uh, the social worker at the PICU, were you involved with DCF cases? Oh, yes. Um, when I worked for Suncoast Center with Therapeutic Foster Care Program, many, all of our kids had to be in foster care to be there. So I worked extensively with DCF and with the court system um, during those 11 years. And then when you're at All Children's with PICU, did, did you also have, uh, were there patients there that were, in fact, uh, DCF Yes, patients? yes. If there's a shelter order in place with respect to um, a patient at All Children's, what's the protocol with respect to their name being included uh, in the registry or on the door? Sure. Thirty-nine and uh, legal conclusion. Uh, so, if we get a shelter order, the very first thing we do is put it into the medical chart. We call downstairs and take that person off of the registry so that nobody can just visit who isn't cleared to visit. We also take their name off of the door um, to their room. Okay. Um,
can I see Exhibit uh, 2278036, please? It's in evidence. Ms. Beattie, do you recognize this document? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, this dated November 8, I can see, 18, 2016. Mm -hmm. And this was a uh, write-up to you regarding corrective action notice? Correct. Do you recall the circumstances around this? I do. Can you I go was, ahead and tell us about that? I was covering the PICU and the cardiovascular unit, um, and there was a family that was discharging out of the CV, the cardiovascular unit, and the case manager at the time had offered them or said that I would provide for them a $50 gift card for gas. They lived five miles away from the hospital, and technically you can't give them that amount of money for gas. Um, I found out that it was for food, and um, they really didn't need it for gas, and so I went to my supervisor and asked if we could provide something. I was told we couldn't, and I went back to talk to Pam, who is the case manager for the CV, and I... I lost my cool for a few minutes. And, well, why um, were you so upset? Because I was going to have to go back to the family and tell them that we couldn't provide the help that had been given. You know, she said we would just give you this. And I felt bad that this family didn't have food. I was able to provide at least a list of resources of food banks, but, it, you know, it, it's very hard to go back to a family who you know is struggling. Not your best moment? Not my best moment. Did you, in fact, apologize to the employee? Immediately. I sent an email and I went down and told my supervisor exactly what I had done. Let's talk about, uh, well, let's talk about, so you started there in 2009, and when did you leave All Children's? I left All Children's, um, it was during COVID, so I think it was 2020. Um, when did you first get involved with Maya Kowalski? So I believe that Maya came in on a Friday. I was not there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, so I would have on Monday. Okay. Does October 10th, 2016 sound familiar? It does. Okay. Can we put up 1001-2026, uh, please? Could make that larger. Um, okay. So do you recognize this as part of the hospital chart regarding Maya Kowalski? Yes, I do. Okay. All right. And it says social worker, social work signature, that's you? Yes. Okay. And this was on October 11th, 2016, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, I would like to direct your attention to under actions taken or intervention completed. Is this a note that you would have put into the system? Yes, it is. Okay. All right, and there's, uh, it says, social worker contacted by medical team, parents have agreed to stay, team's concerned mother will change her mind. I would like to address that for a minute. Sure. Um, at some point, uh, on October 13th, 2016, Maya became sheltered there by DCF, correct? Correct. All right, so this is before Maya is sheltered. This is October 11th. Right. Um, your first inter was your first interaction with the parents actually on October 10th? Yes. Okay. So between October 10th and October 13th, did the parents ever indicate to you that they wanted to leave and take Maya? They didn't indicate that to me. They did to the medical team. Did they ever tell you that they wanted to leave? No. At this point in time on October 11th, was it your understanding that the parents had agreed to stay? Yes. All right. There's also some discussion in this note about Nemours. Do you recall being involved in uh, attempting to obtain a transfer to Nemours? Yes. And so, without going into all the details, do you recall ultimately what occurred with that attempt? Yes. So we had a meeting. The, the attending for that week was Dr. Michelle Smith. We had a meeting with Mrs. Kowalski and Nemours, Dr. Santana through Nemours. And um, it looked like it was a go. I got all the, the case manager and I got all the paperwork together and um, 
then when we actually were talking to her about the actual transfer, she said no, she wasn't going to go. By she, you mean Mrs. Mrs. Kowalski, Kowalski would not agree? Okay. All right. Can I have uh, sorry, 100? Zero, zero. I'm sorry, Rosie. What was in this exhibit number that's up right now? Sure. It's, well, I have to look now. Uh, two, 2026. Thank you. Sure. Um, can we put up 1001 2024? Uh, can you repeat that a little more? Sure, I'm sorry. 1001 2024. Is this another note by you, Ms. Beattie? It is. If we can um, make the actions taken, well, all right. Thank you. Um, at this point in time, um, you had spoken to Mrs. Kowalski. Yes. Yada, right? Um, and she indicated she was unhappy with the CPI investigation. Yes. And I don't want to get into that, but um, did she also report to you that she was happy with the care being provided to Maya? Yes, according to my note, yes. Okay. We can go to the next, uh, I'm guessing it would be 2023. <clears throat> Um, actually, I guess it'll be 2025, sorry. Is this the rest of your note? <coughs> yeah. Um, and so there was also some conversation about educational services for the patient. Do you recall that? I do. Okay. And you received a call from an attorney for Ms. Kowalski? I did. Okay. And what was the end result of that conversation about school services? Um, so mom felt that Maya was too sick at this point, even though the attorney had called me. Mom felt that she was too sick to start Jackson, school. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, so on October 13, 16, the Maya is now sheltered. Um, can we have 1001 2023? Okay, is this your note? Yes, it is. Okay. yes it is. If we could have the actions taken or intervention completed. Thank you. Um, so let me ask you this. Um, with respect to your role, um, when this child, when Maya was sheltered, um, who was tasked with having to tell Mr. Kowalski that he had to leave? I was. And who was, <laughs> and who was, had to go in and tell Maya that her father had to leave and her mother could not visit? So dad and I both went back into the room to explain to Maya that he had to leave and that mom couldn't visit. Um, and what was Maya's reaction that you recall? She was very angry. Um, she was hurt. She was sad. She was crying. Um, but she was also yelling and screaming. And what do you recall her yelling? Um, she was calling the medical team and us um, effing assholes. Did Mr. Kowalski uh, comply with your in, with the information and the request that he had to leave? He did. Any issues at all with Mr. Kowalski? None whatsoever. Okay. Thank you, Claude. Were you, throughout the three months that Maya Kowalski was in the hospital, uh, the one that had to um, tell Maya bad news? Yes. Typically, CPI or the DCF people would call me and ask me to go in and let Maya know what was going on with certain parts of the, the court proceedings. Do you recall an instance where you had to tell Maya that she wasn't going to be able to go home for Christmas? Yeah. Go so ahead and tell us about that, please. Maya was really excited about Christmas, and there are a lot of things that go on at the hospital during Christmas, so... Um, I got a call from or an email from the CPI, I don't remember which, and the CPI asked me to go in and let Maya know that she wasn't going to be able to go home for Christmas. Um, it was a really hard conversation. I went in um, and 
explain that to Maya. Maya was so upset. She was crying. She was just devastated. And um, she asked, she was just sobbing. She asked if she could sit in my lap, and I said, sure. I hugged her. Um, she cried for a good 10 minutes or so. Um, and she was mad, and she was saying all kinds of things about wanting to talk to the judge. And that was really it. What was your intent in having Maya sit on your lap? Just to provide comfort and support to her at that time. Is that the only time that you had Maya sit on your lap? Yes. Did you ever take Maya down to the chapel by yourself? No. Did you ever put Maya on your lap down in the chapel? No. Let's talk about um, how it is that you stayed with Maya and was her social worker on the seventh floor. At that time, back in 2016, you were assigned to the PICU? Correct. And the cardiac? In the, in the cardiac ICU. In the cardiac ICU. So how is it that you then um, followed Maya? So the day that Maya was moving from the PICU to the, to the uh, seventh floor, my supervisor called me and asked me to stay on the case because I had um, good DCF experience with uh, managing the shelter orders and things like that from my p previous job, but also in the PICU. Can we put up 2123010? So this is an evidence. You see the email from Nina? Who's Nina at the bottom? Nina was the social worker um, for the seventh floor. Okay. And she's asking whether or not you're going to continue to follow Maya? Correct. And your response was you'll continue to follow? Correct. Um, was there, with respect to Nina, was there a reason that was expressed to you as to why they wanted you to, why your boss wanted you to follow Maya? I certainly wasn't going to explain to Nina why I was being asked to follow the case. Oh, Nina, sorry. It's okay. And and what was the reason that she didn't feel that Nina had the experience with DCF, and this was turning out to be a very intensive case. All right, thank you. Throughout your. Um, Throughout the time that Maya was there uh, on the seventh floor, did she have any religious articles in her room? Yes. Can you talk about that, please? Tell us what you observed. Sure. So she had a lot of prayer cards, and she had her rosary. Um, Maya prayed every morning. Um, some mornings, if I went by the room, she would be doing her prayer cards and I would knock on the door and she would say, either I could come in or can I come back later. What is your faith? I'm Roman Catholic. Are you practicing? I am. Would you at some times pray with Maya? Yes, yes. Um, Maya was doing a rosary one day and she was doing a rosary, I can't remember who it was for, but we sat and prayed the rosary together. Would you, as the social worker that was uh, assigned to Maya, also get involved in making sure people got escorted, escorted to her room? That was part of the policy and procedure, is that any, any child that was under state care had to be escorted, the visitors had to be um, escorted to the room and then escorted out of the room and back down to the first floor. Okay. And was it, who was it, uh, was it DCF that would be determining who was approved to visit and who was not? Yes. Okay. Um, do you recall um, in October 21st, um, first of all, uh, would you sometimes get contacted when you weren't even working? Yes. For people to say, hey, somebody's here? Yes. To clear? Okay. Uh, do you recall... Um, making arrangements for the teacher, Jackie Dieter, to get in on a Sunday? Yes. Okay. And how would you do that? Who would you then communicate with to make sure that they knew to make sure the teacher was escorted? 
So either I would put it on my handoff report, which I would do at the end of the, each day we had we did a handoff report, or if the if the social worker in the hospital would call me at home and ask. Is this person allowed to come? But I think I put it in a handoff report. Would you sometimes send emails? Yes. Okay. Yes. And they would be directed to the social worker that was on? was working. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, was it your understanding that at least uh, in October until November 10th, I think it was November 10th, that um, mom, Mrs. Kowalski, was not allowed any contact with Maya, yes. pursuant to the court orders. That's correct. Okay. All right. Did there come a time when, um, during that time frame, when um, Ms. Kowalski wasn't allowed any contact, where the phone was removed from Maya's room? Yes. Okay. And do you recall receiving an email about that? Yes, Nancy. Were you the one that removed the phone? No, Nancy then, the social worker that was there on the weekends, removed the phone. And what was the reason that she removed the phone? Mrs. Kowalski had made lots of phone calls to Maya on, a, I guess it was a Saturday, because that was the day Nancy worked. And um, there wasn't supposed to be any contact. So the phone was removed. Now, at, at, during this time frame, October 13th to November 10th, I have the date right. Was Jack Kowalski uh, entitled to have supervised visits? Yes. And who would be supervising those visits? DCF. Okay. And during that time when the supervised visits, who was determining what Mr. Kowalski could and could not bring into the room? DCF. Do you recall an instance where um, Mr. Kowalski wanted to bring in communion and he was not allowed to do that by DCF? Yes. Do you recall um, that there was a time when a Dr. Duncan was coming to see uh, Maya? Yes. Okay. And was that something that you made sure she that you emailed and made sure people were aware that she was coming? I did. Okay. All right. Do you recall a time when Maya had written a letter that she wanted to send to the judge? Yes. And what did you do with that letter? So any communications that Maya wanted to send to the judge, I would take it, scan it in, and email it to the case manager, the DCF case manager. Now, at, uh, once Mr. Kowalski was allowed unsupervised visit, were you involved at all in um, arranging for that? So all I did for that is the court had asked Mr. Kowalski to notify us of when he wanted to come and visit and what times. So I would, he would send me an email or uh, I think an email, and then I would send the email along um, with those dates and times to whoever was working on the seventh floor. It would be the bedside nurse that you would... It could be the bedside nurse or the, or the charge nurse. All right, can we show, uh, can we bring up 3217534? Okay, so um, can you make it a little larger, please? For my eyes, if nobody else... <laughs> Um, and so is this uh, what you were referring to, that you would get an email from um, Mr. Kowalski telling you the dates and times that he wanted to visit? Correct. Okay. And then your response was that you're not in, but you'll make sure the seventh floor knows you're coming? Right. Okay. Uh, can we bring up 3217568? Similar, is this a, an email that you would get? And, and below there are all the dates in November that Mr. Kowalski was going to come visit? Correct. And your response was to do what? Objection leading to sustain. What would be your response to this email? Or what was your response? So I, I simply said, hi, Jack, all is well. Thanks for keeping me in the loop on the, the dates and that I would forward those on. 
Okay. Can we see 3217598? This is another request um, by Mr. Kowalski. Yes. And and did you understand December 1-14 mean 1 through 14th? Um, I'm not sure what I thought. But, um, I think it, I thought one and, one and fourteen. Okay, all right. But anyway, these are the dates that Mr. Kowalski chose that he wanted to come in and visit. Sure. And you were not dictating what dates he could come in. Not at all. Okay. Not at all. Uh, three, two, one, seven, seven, one, six, please. <clears throat> Now, this is a request for a visit after 6 and then on Saturday. Um, would those be arranged? Objection leading. That one so he's requesting a one-hour supervised visit, um, and he's letting me know that his sister-in-law is available for those visits. So, yes, I would have still let the, um, the seventh floor know that. Okay. And three two one seven eight oh three. Again, additional dates that Mr. Kowalski was was telling you that he was going to come visit, correct? Correct. All right. Thank you, Clint. Do you, uh, are you aware that, well, let, me, let me just ask you this way. Um, are you aware that at one point a Detective Graham came and met with Mr. Kowalski? Yes. Did you have anything to do with arranging that visit? No. Did you become aware, um, can we bring up 1001 2017, please? Um, and under plan near the bottom. Okay. So this is not your note. This is Poa. Say her name, please. Poala. Poala. Thank Poala. you. Poala Padron's note, correct? Yes. So were you involved at all with the incident where two women came in that were not previously approved? No. Okay, from the church. All right. Uh, let me ask you a question. What is medical foster care? So medical foster care is any child that might have medical needs, um, and that can be from medication um, to a vent or to having to administer medications for diabetes. Or um, so they have they have significant medical needs, and instead of going to a regular foster care home where there might be four other children, they would go to a medical foster care home, and that medical foster care parent would take them to doctor's appointments coordinate with the parents all of the medical kinds of things that were going on for the child. So was Maya Kowalski a situation where if she was in an outpatient uh, program that she would need to be, while she's being sheltered, that she would need to be in a medical foster home? Yeah. Yes. Objection leading. So, okay. What, what would be, um, with respect to Maya Kowalski and her situation, what would be her requirements if she was in an outpatient uh, program while still being sheltered by DCF? Sure. Maya would have had to have gone to a medical foster care home because she was in a wheelchair. Um, she couldn't have gone to a regular foster care home because she would have needed Honor, more help. Way, this is chapter 39, way beyond scope. Okay. That question is allowed. Yeah, I'll move on, Chapter. <coughs> um, at some point, uh, can we bring up um, 1001-2007, please? Were you familiar who Mike Kelly was with respect to Maya Kowalski? Yes. And, and what's your understanding of what, who Mike Kelly was? He was the children's attorney in the beginning. Um, is this your note? <coughs> Let me find you. Yes, this is your note, correct? Yes. Um,
So looking at the bottom of that, were you, did Maya tell you something with respect to um, what her attorney advised her? Yes, she said that her. Objection in chapter 39. I'm, I'm that one. Sure. Can you go ahead and put that down? Ms. Beatty, do you recall that, um, around December 6th of 2016 that there was a new attorney, Attorney Mark Zimmerman? I do. Do you recall when he arrived arranging for him to meet with Maya in the PICU conference room? I do. When Mr. Zimmerman on occasion would come in um, at that point in time to meet with Maya, was Maya at a high risk fall status? Yes, she was. And what was the requirement with respect to whether or not Maya's door had to remain open? So if wherever she was, the door would have to remain open and someone ha would have to keep eyes on her in case she fell again. Did you ever lurk outside the door trying to listen in on the phone call with Mr. Zimmerman and no. Maya? No. Um, the way that our units are set up, there would be a nursing station outside of Maya's room. And so I would sit there and do notes because you had to escort that person to bedside and then escort that person from bedside downstairs. Okay. 
Um, when the phone calls with um, Beata Kowalski were started to be allowed in November, uh, were you supervising those calls? No. Who was supervising those calls? DCF. Okay. Um, I want to play an um, audio for you. And the question at the end is going to be whether or not that's you on the call. Okay. Um, 3217. You know what? Hold on. That's not right. Here it is. 2608. And there should be four segments. Let's just start with A. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm recording this phone call so everybody knows. Okay, hi mommy. Hi honey, how are you sweetie pie? I'm her and I miss you. I miss you so much too. I miss you so much, every day, every you know, single happy, day. You know how happy it makes me feel to hear your voice. I'm here, I miss you so much, and I am so happy that I'm finally able to hear your voice, too. Yeah. Yeah. I will help. Yes. What did you say, sweetie? I will I can see you soon. I, I would love to see you soon. I would love to see you soon. We just have to wait for the judge to make the decision, okay? As soon as he makes the decision, then I'll be able to see you. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. About the case, okay? Maya, honey, just we're gonna talk about uh, what you've been doing. If you need any shopkins or things like that. If you had nice visits with your daddy, but we can't discuss the case, okay, honey? Right, thank you. Um, that was the first call that Mai was able to have with her mom? Yes. Okay. Um, do you know, first of all, is that your voice on the call? No, that's the DCF case manager, Charlotte Laporte. Okay. Uh, can we bring up 3217A0569? Uh, And can we go to, I think, the fourth page, so maybe 0569. I probably said it wrong. And can we go to 0572? Okay, um, so do you see that um, this is an email from Ms. Laporte to Beata Kowalski? Yes. Okay. And dated November 16, 2016? Yes. Okay. And it indicates that yesterday when you are on the phone, I had to redirect. Do you see that? I do. And were you copied on this string of emails? I was. Um, any question in your mind that that was Ms. Laporte on that phone call? No. Any question in your mind it wasn't you? No. Um, talk about, tell, explain to the jury why you were involved at all in that phone call. So we had to have a phone that could do three-way calling because DCF would call in to a phone. We would put my on, then DCF would call in to mom is my understanding of how it worked. So I, and also DCF wanted my on speakerphone. So our phones actually did that, had that function, whereas the bedside nurses and the regular room phones didn't have that function. So was it your work phone? Yes, my work cell phone. So on this particular day, Ms. Laporte would contact with you, and then there would be contact made with Beata Kowalski? Correct. And you would then give the phone to Maya? Correct. And where would you be? So sometimes the way the rooms were set up, there was a computer station with a chair in the room and I would do my notes while I was while the call was going on. Um, the reason I did that was Well let me ask you, why okay. 
why were you so close to the phone or in the room or nearby? Sure. So I covered the pediatric intensive care unit and the cardiac care intensive unit. So that was a total of 40 beds, 48 beds. So if my phone went off, then I would have had to have gone to whatever was happening um, at that time. Um, there were also times that I covered the emergency room too. So we were a little bit understaffed and there was a lot going on. Um, were you the only social worker that was involved in helping to arrange these calls? No. Who else would have been involved? Whoever was on the weekend would have been involved. Um, Paula, I think Paula was involved. What about Nancy Venn? Yes, Nancy Venn was the Saturday social worker. Prior to uh, December, let me get the date. Sixteen, did you supervise, 2016, did you supervise any calls between Maya and Beata? Prior to what date? December 16, 2016. No. When, um, can we go ahead and play um, 2608B, please? Um. How, how about, how are you doing? How is CP and LP going for you? And not good. Well, um, okay. Be honest, we can't discuss any of those type of matters, okay? Okay. Again, this is the same phone call from November 15th, 2016 with Ms. LaPorte on the call, but she redirected at the time. Did you, uh, on the couple occasions that you supervise a call, have to redirect? There were a couple. And what was the intent behind redirecting uh, Ms. Kowalski? Can I see my note? Um, yes. One second. Bring up 1001-1981, and at the bottom under plan, and um, is this a note by you? It is. On January 5th, 2017? It is. And were you supervising FaceTime call with mom? I was. And then during that call, did you have to redirect her? I did. And mom. why did you redirect her? Mom started speaking in Polish, and that was part of the, um, the rules, is that Mom couldn't speak in Polish to Maya. Okay, thank you. So what was the intent? Were you intending to try to disturb the call or cause harm? Oh, no. No, no. I just wanted Mom to speak in English so that we were following all the rules that were set up. Um, were there uh, times when you would receive um, cards or letters um, from Beata Kowalski for Maya? They would come through the case manager, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, how would you get them? That okay. was my question. So the case manager was, in, she would review everything and then she would email it to me and then I would print it out and take it to Maya's room. Um, do you recall uh, a birthday card? Yes. So, um, how did you receive the birthday card from Beata Kowalski to give to Maya? So it was scanned into an email from from uh, Charlotte Laporte. So did you receive the original card? No. And what did you do when you received the scanned in card? Um, I printed it and took it up to Maya's room. 
Did you, in fact, uh, advise Jack Kowalski that you had done that, that you had given him the card? I did. I sent an email. All right. Um, were there times when you would receive letters or pictures that originated from Beata Kowalski, made it to Charlotte, and then to you, where there was a delay in you receiving them? Yes. And when you got them, what would you do with them? As soon as I got them, because I knew that they were important to her, I would go ahead and print them and take them to her. Okay. Can we bring up uh, 30? Let me make sure. Too many papers. I lost my note. Okay. Uh, can we bring up uh, 3217784, please? So I want to talk about uh, some dresses, Christmas dresses. Sure. Okay. So did you receive an email from Mr. Kowalski? It's up in front of you, um, the bottom half, please. Uh, on December 22nd, asking about dresses that he had dropped off for Christmas. Yes, I did. Okay, and did, this, and did he indicate to you specifically that Maria had requested for him to bring her red dress for Christmas? Yes, it does. All right, and go ahead and do the top half, please. And does this refresh me? What, what do you recall about these dresses and what happened to him and your involvement? So once I got the, the email from him, I went to find the dresses. And they were actually in the social work office, um, and then I took them to Maya. Okay. Did you take them, or did Paula take them? I think Paula took them. But in any event, were they dropped off when you were not working? Yes. Okay. And then did you communicate with Mr. Kowalski about the dresses? Yes. And what did you advise him? That we had gotten the dresses to her including the special red dress for Christmas? Yes. Um, can we bring up 1001, 1989? Um, do you see this note on December 23rd, 2016? I do. And to your knowledge, is that talking about those same dresses? Yes. And who is Paula Padron again? She was one of the other social workers. Can we bring up, please, um, 34032? And this is a picture of December 24th, 2016. Would that be one of the dresses that was dropped off? Yes. And can we see 34033? This is taken December 25th, 2016. Is that another of the dresses that was dropped off? Yes. The red dress. Do you recall any dress that was a special hill figure dress with blue and white? No, I don't. Were all the dresses that were dropped off by Mr. Kowalski at this time delivered to Maya? Yes. Um, were you, um, w without getting into the details of them, throughout the three months that Maya was sheltered at All Children's Hospital, involved in multiple attempts to try to get Maya transferred to another facility? <laughs> That's the...
Miss Beattie, um, did you ever tell Maya that her mother was in a mental institution? No. Did you ever tell her she was never going to go home to her mother? No. Did you tell Maya it was all in her head? No. Did you ever tell Maya that she couldn't play with other children? No, in fact, I would see Maya playing down. We had a, um, an area of the hospital on the second floor that was the kids' child life playroom, and I would see Maya down there often. I walked past, back and forth between the two buildings, and I would see Maya down there playing with the other kids. Did Maya like chocolate cake? She did. And where would she get the chocolate cake? So the chocolate cake from the hospital, we would bring it from the cafeteria. Did you ever tell Maya that you were going to make her, bake her a chocolate cake if she did well in physical therapy? Absolutely not. When you would be in the room when phone calls were being uh, supervised uh, by DCF and they were using your phone and you were in there, would you make faces or roll your eyes or make comments? No. Never. Did you ever tell Maya that you were worried that she couldn't have a computer because you were worried she would visit a porn site? No. With respect to Mr. Kowalski, were all your interaction was with him cordial? Yes. Did you ever suggest to Mr. Kowalski that he should divorce his wife? No, I never suggested that. Did there... Uh, uh, do you recall on January 6, 2016, um, taking pictures of Maya Kowalski? I do. Um, tell us, and we're going to look at the pictures and go through it in detail, but generally speaking, why were you uh, taking pictures of Maya? So the attending for that week was Dr. <coughs> Danielson, and Dr. Danielson wanted to go ahead and document the condition of her skin before she left the hospital and then when she got back to the hospital. Was she being actually discharged that day and then being readmitted? Yes. And do you recall why she was leaving that day? She was going to see Dr. Hannah and then she was going to court. And, and do you recall who, which family member was picking Maya up? Yes, her uncle um, Scott and his wife Wendy. So let's talk about that. Did you, prior to, did you have any assistance in taking the pictures in the morning? Yes. And do you recall who that was? It was the bedside nurse. Okay. If I said Miss Alcide, would that ring a bell at all? I just know it was the bedside nurse. Okay. Um, prior to, uh, did you and the bedside nurse go in the room together? We did. Before you and, uh, I, I'm just going to ask you to assume it was Nurse Alcide. Um, before you and Nurse Alcide went into the room, did you first go into the room and have a private conversation with Maya? Objection leading, sustained. Okay. Did you go into the room prior to you and Nurse Alcide going in the room to talk to Maya about the photographs? Objection leading, the same question. She can answer that question. No, I talked to the bedside nurse and explained to her what um, Dr. Danielson wanted to have happen, and then we went in together and talked with Maya. Was risk management aware that these photos were being taken? Yes. Okay. Um, can we bring up twenty one twenty three eight three three? Um, this is dated January 5, 2017. Is this emails regarding the photos? Yes. Okay. Um, I, it indicates that um, Ms. Condon suggested two persons would be in the room while this was done. Correct. Okay. Um, so is this talking about the photos that you were done, that were being done before Maya Kowalski left? 
Yes, and when she came back. Okay. Well, let me let's bring up exhibit. Paper challenged. Um, three, two, one, seven, eight, five, zero, and eight, five, one, B. Okay, so we look to. Do you recall about what time the photos were taken in the morning before she went? So they were taken around 10. 10 in the morning? Yes. Before she left for, for right. 10. Okay, so this email is dated, the first one, 850, is dated January 6, 2017, at 617 in the evening? Correct. Okay, and then 3217051B is at 736 p.m., the same date. Yes. Um, what is it you're communicating to Ms. Condon with respect to the photographs when she got back? The, the, the pictures are done and that I'm locking the camera in my office over the weekend. Do you use the same camera to take the before pictures and the after pictures? Yes. Okay. Let's talk about the actual pictures taking session themselves. Um, let's bring up, if we can, please. Uh, 2604 007. Um, do you recognize that as one of the pictures that you took? Yes, I do. Okay. And is that um, Maya? Yes, that's Maya. Okay. And it appears that she does not have her shirt on? Correct. What is she wearing? She's wearing her sports bra. And what was she wearing on the bottom? Here's Shorts. Um, did you have any? Who removed the shirt? Uh, the bedside nurse. Have you ever removed any clothing off of uh, Maya Kowalski? No. Whose responsibility would it be to assist if, if uh, Maya needed some assistance in either getting in or getting out of clothes? That would have been the bedside nurse. Overruled. Tell me what you recall about the pictures that were being taken in the morning before um, Maya left with her uncle. So the bedside nurse um, helped remove just her t-shirt and then I took the pictures um, and then we, I left the room. Maya got ready to go to uh, for her um, uncle to come and pick her up to take her to Dr. Hamm's office. Were you in the room at all while Maya was getting dressed in another outfit? No. Um, 
Let's bring up uh, 2604006. Um, is this a picture that you took? Yes. And this is one of the ones before she went to church? Yes. <laughs> before she went to? Yes. Court. To court. Okay. Um, and do you recognize that was the bedside nurse there? Yes. Okay. Um, was Maya happy? No, she wasn't happy about it. Did she cooperate? Yes, she cooperated. Was there any screaming or shouting? None. Did either you or Nurse Arsid have to hold her down? No. Um, can you bring up 2604008, please? And two six. Oh, there's two six zero four zero one eight side by side. Okay. Um, do you recognize these pictures as being part of the, the one on the left in the white and the pink as being part of the set that you took before she went to court? The white one was before she went to court. And what about 2604018? Is what she had on when she came back from court. Okay. Um, what was the purpose of taking pictures when she came back from court? Um, again, we were documenting the skin issues, if there were any. All right, let's bring up 2604004. Do you see the? Do you see Maya's hands? I do. Do you see your another hand in there? I do. Do you know whose hand that is? I don't. When Maya came back, thank you, Clay. When Maya came back from court, um, how did that picture session go with Maya? It went really good. It went pretty quick. Any holding down? No. Maya? Any screaming? None. None. talking about the clothes that there was a social worker social workers office yes do you um, did you was that yours or was it a, an office for all social workers it was a it was a kind of like a drop zone for all social workers we each had our own offices off of our units okay. all right thank you thank you So we're clear, Ms. Beatty. Do you want to take a break now? Or do you? Yes, this will be longer than usual. Members of the jury, let's go ahead and take that.